But firstly, it's, uh, it's, it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, David Fraser, who's the uh, Group CEO of uh, Capricorn. Uh, David has over 35 years experience in the auto industry, uh, which gives him a unique understanding and insight both in Australia and globally. David is the current director of various Cap Capricorn subsidiary boards. He's a former director and past president of the AAA and David and I worked very closely uh, over, a, a, I think it was uh, 12 years in all uh, in the AAA board. Um, he's also a current director of the Business Council of Cooperatives and Mutuals and the deputy chairman of the Cooperatives Federation of WA. David's keynote address will cover the major findings of Capricorn's State of the Nation 2020 report, which identifies many of the challenges facing our industry, including changing technology, skills shortages, access to information, and the future dynamics of work, uh, and evolving customer de demands and industry dynamics. So uh, please join me in welcoming David Fraser. Welcome, David. Thank you very much, Stuart, and thank you very much for that kind introduction and for allowing me the opportunity to present at today's uh, Industry Leaders Forum. Uh, it was really pleasing just to hear the Minister's remarks and his update on the mandatory data sharing law and uh, well, what a great day. It's taken over a decade to get here, but it really, really is a great milestone moment for our industry. So it's now my pleasure to be here and share some of the meaningful data uh, on our industry and some of the recommendations that uh, we've found uh, with regards to a way forward based on the research that uh, we completed. I'll cover some of the major findings from Capricorn's inaugural State of the Nation research project uh, and the subsequent report that we've produced. I'll share with you uh, what some of those key challenges are uh, that, they, that our members have shared with us. I will say though, it was also quite uplifting to see the optimism many of them have for the future of our industry. And I know we have over 950 people online for today's forum. So I'm hoping we have a good mix of workshop owners amongst us because the content I will talk to is very much focused about them. Also just quickly say the report is available to anybody. You do not have to be a Capricorn member or preferred supplier to have access to it. Anyone can obtain a copy on the Capricorn public website and we're making it available to anyone because if there's one or two gold nuggets in there for every workshop, then from our perspective, that will help create a stronger and more sustainable automotive aftermarket. And we think that's gotta be good for all of us. One of the first things that stood out in the report is that workshop owners really are salt of the earth people. They really do have a passion about what they do. And personally, I was rapt to see that the number one reason people want to work in our industry is to make their customers happy. I was so rapt about that, but to be quite honest, I wasn't really that surprised. We know that the overwhelming majority of the automotive industry is made up of small and, small and family owned businesses. And that being an SME in a highly competitive industry means that workshops must really, really be good at being customer centric and building those long-term relationships. And we also know that when it comes to customers' cars, they like finding problems, they like fixing them, and they like helping their customer get out of a problem. Since we surveyed our members though, the, well, the world has changed uh, quite dramatically for all of us. Although we only released the survey findings at the beginning of August, it was actually completed earlier this year, just before the COVID-19 outbreak. So that said, we are planning to undertake the survey annually and, and future State of the Nation's reports will actually help us track the recovery post the impact of the pandemic that's had on not just our industry, but society as well. So as I go through the, 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 the following slides, I, I hope you'll get some value from the findings and find it as insightful and as fascinating as, as we have. Firstly, a little bit about us, and I promise this is the only slide I'll put up today that's a plug about Capricorn. Uh, for those of you that don't know us, we were established back in 1974 by a small group of 12 Western Australian service station owners who decided that if they cooperated together, they could build better businesses, provide better services to their customers and provide a better life for themselves and their families. Today, we have over 22 and a half thousand members 
uh, and over 2,000 committed preferred suppliers across Australia and New Zealand who are all looking to support the automotive industry. And in addition to the Capricorn trade account that we provide our members, we also offer them a broader range of services, including equipment finance, travel and event services, and business protection through our own uh, discretionary mutual. We operate on cooperative principles, which means that our members are also our shareholder owners, and the profits are, are returned to them via our reward point program, trade rebates, and, and dividends. But enough about that, and let's move on to the State of the Nation report. And I guess the question would be, why did we do it? Well, we wanted to better understand the mood, take a pulse check amongst our members to really get a handle on the issues, the trends, some of the challenges affecting them, their business, and our industry overall. It was the most substantial piece of research that we've ever conducted. And the result of that research is a 46 page uh, report uh, which we think is brimming with easy to read insights uh, that will help work workshops create stronger businesses. And it sets a benchmark against which they can also uh, measure their own success. As you can see on this slide, over 1,500 businesses participated and our sample was a good representation of our membership base across Australia and New Zealand. It included different sizes of workshops and different types of businesses such as mechanical, a collision repair, tire and suspension, auto electrical, mobile mechanics, etc., And it captured a good mix of independent workshops as well as chains and franchise groups. What really came through loudly is we actually are an industry that really loves what we do. We're quite passionate about the businesses that we run. But that said, it, it, it's not an industry that doesn't come with its own set of challenges. Before the outbreak of COVID, the vast majority of our members felt confident about the future of both the automotive industry as well as their own businesses. That said, their confidence in the industry's future comes mostly from the belief that there will always be a market for what they do. And when it comes to their own businesses, the main driver of that confidence was having a loyal customer base. The knowledge that the customer will keep coming back to them. And as I said a moment ago, the workshop owners are soul of the earth people. They have a real passion for what they do. And that really starts to come out on some of the quotes that's uh, on this slide you can see. It's all about helping others, making someone's day a bit better than when it started, or being an honest business owner. And there's a great quote on the bottom right hand side of this slide from a New Zealand member about the opportunities to rise to the growing challenges of exceeding customer, uh, exceeding customer demands and expectations of the modern day consumer. And that is a gem of a quote. That is really knowing your customer and knowing that their expectations will always be changing. And you'll see in a slide coming up about how much workshops are reliant on that repeat business. So it's really, really important to be alert to changing preferences amongst your customer base. On the flip side of all that optimism, there are workshops that are worried about changing technology, uh, the stresses of workload, the impact of competitors, uh, financial factors, and economic or other environmental changes. So let's move on to some of those. And I suspect there really are no surprises on this slide. It doesn't matter whether you're running a large or small workshop, many business owners struggle to maintain a good work-life balance. Interestingly, on this subject, I had a conversation with Rachel Sheldrick uh, earlier this week, and many of you would know Rachel as the workshop whisperer. And she spoke passionately about this work-life balance topic. Uh, she spoke about coaching yourself to let go a little, giving your people an opportunity to step up, uh, providing them with the resources so they, so they can understand how to manage the business when you're not there. And then finally, giving yourself a break. So even if it's only a short one, just to start with. Around a third of the survey respondents are also worried about changing technology and financial concerns such as lowering margins. Two and five are concerned about their ability to access technical information. So again, um, it was really exciting and pleasing just to hear from Michael Suka to know where the government's now at with the uh, mandatory data sharing code. 
Uh, and as we just talked about, it has been a great outcome uh, from the announcement we've just heard from the minister this morning. But in a moment, you'll also hear more about that from Leslie Yates. And for those of you that know Leslie, you know she has been a campaign warrior uh, on this particular topic. Another well-known and not new challenge is the lack of qualified staff and attracting young people into our industry. And these are both concerns regarding the future of our workforce. Finally, cap price servicing and longer dealership warranties are also troubling for workshops. Again, we've, we've spoken about that already this morning. And this, this was consistent for uh, independents as well as chains and franchise groups. And as we do know, technology is radically changing our industry. And as technology in vehicles changes, so too does the technology needed to repair and service them. Half of the survey respondents highlighted changing technology as the number one challenge facing the industry. And one third said it was the biggest challenge that they face in their own business. But that said, workshop owners do have optimism about the industry being ready to embrace whatever emerging technology is coming at them from around the corner. And there's another excellent quote on the bottom left-hand slide of this slide about failing to keep up with technology and how it'll eventually lead to going out of business. So investing in the right software, in the right scan tools is vital to accurately diagnosing a job and getting the cars in and getting the cars out. And a key message here is not to think of reinvesting in a diagnostic scan tool as a cost of doing business. Think of it as an investment in your business and an investment in your future. In the survey, we discovered only a third of workshops always charge for the use of uh, diagnostic scan tools. Businesses shouldn't be afraid to recover the cost of using these tools or other diagnostic software. Even if you only charge $2 each time, if you have an, on average, the survey told us that was a, on average, there was about 30 cars a week going through the workshops. Well, if you charge $2 every time you put one of those scan tools on 30 cars, that's another $3,100 at the end of the year. And that'll go straight to your bottom line. So keeping up with technology in the front of the workshop is also just as important as keeping up with technology in the back of the workshop. And a small, for a small uh, workshop, investing in a cloud-based workshop management system will streamline your, your business, improve productivity, and give some of that time back to you and your, for yourself and your family. And frankly, the investment in a cloud-based workshop management system is gonna cost you less than a takeaway coffee a day. So let's move on to the future of work. And while survey respondents are generally confident about the future, finding and retaining good staff and attracting young people into the industry are still con uh, key concerns. And again, probably no real surprises about this one. On top of that, only half of those surveyed would recommend a career in the automotive industry to others. And that probably was one of the most scariest things that I read when I read the report for the first time. So why isn't our industry more, a more attractive place to work? Well, I think certainly pay rates could be one issue as the hourly rate for technicians increases only marginally, regardless of their level of experience. The broader industry also needs to work together to change the perception of the automotive aftermarket. Today, repairing vehicles requires a highly skilled and a highly committed workforce. The perception of unkept, unclean or unskilled workers in our industry is just not true. As we would all know, never before have vehicles been so technical with more data and code written into them. And as we've often heard in the past, there's probably more code written into a modern day vehicle than there is into a mod modern day aircraft. You know, the, the skill set required is constantly evolving and becoming even more technical. You know, auto repairers are passionate. They're passionate individuals. They are committed to excellence in terms of repairs and repairs, service and customer satisfaction. And at Capricorn, and we're not the only ones that do this, but we run an annual Apprentice of the Year competition. And I've got to say each year, the caliber of the young talent continues to amaze me and our judging panel of industry experts the maturity, the passion, the ethics, and the dedication that these young individuals displays, or display, sorry, truly makes me feel proud of the industry that we all work in and the industry that we all support. 
the industry, the shortage of the apprentices in the in, in, in our industry is an industry wide problem. We can't solve it alone. You know, my guess is we are all going to have to come together uh, and pull together to find uh, a solution uh, to what has been a legacy problem and it continues to this day. Continuing on, supporting the development and training of our workers of the future is something that we all should play an active role in. Two thirds of the workshops in the survey either employ or have previously employed an apprentice. And the leading reason for taking one on is to train the next generation. It can be part, become part of your own succession plan. Uh, another reason to bring on an apprentice is people feel really good about passing on their own skills, their own learnings. And, I guess the other point here on apprentices, and we've just heard it from Minister Suka, there are a number of government support initiatives out there at the moment to assist workers take on apprentices and additional workers. And we should tap into that and use that to our advantage. Mentoring and training qualified technicians is also very important. And what we did learn out of the survey is on average, nine hours per month is being spent on training staff. And when it comes to delivering training, 60% of those surveyed said that they were confident in, the, in training and mentoring their people. So we're confident about it, we feel good about it. Uh, there's a lot of help out there and a lot of government assistance at the moment. So it really is something we should all be considering. I'll move off of that topic and I'll now move on to margin pressure. Uh, and there is this misconception that we need to charge less to attract customers. So I guess if you feel like this, I'm suggesting it's time to change the conversation that we're having with our customers. It's time to start talking about the years of expertise and the years of knowledge that you've built up. You've got to have the confidence in explaining why it is that you charge what you charge. Trust and believe in yourself. It is time we all collectively play to our strengths. What we do know from previous workshops is why car owners choose independent workshops and what these strengths are. And some of these include they trust you. Your, like, your brand is built around the trust they have in you and your workshop. They actually like dealing directly with the person who works on their car. They like the fact that you're locally owned. They like the fact that you're convenient, either close to where they work or close to where they live. And they trust the choices you make regarding the parts you use or the added services that you provide. So the message here is the price lever is not the ones the workshops need to pull the hardest and certainly not the one they need to pull in the first instance. We know from rent, cost of parts, wages and other premiums and add to that the, um, or add in, sorry, the price comparison websites, it all puts downward pressure on prices and we know that the repairers are filling the squeeze. As I previously said, auto repairers have specialist skills and specialist knowledge, and it's an opportunity that we start talking about the value that we provide and we charge accordingly. By not adjusting our, 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 our costs, or sorry, our charges, to accommodate the increased costs that we occur in our businesses and the complexity of running those businesses and the servicing and repairing of those modern day cars, we actually risk the ability to remain competitive over the longer time. You know, reduce profit margins, limit a workshop's owner, uh, owner's capacity to invest in what's required to grow and maintain their business. And that makes it hard to increase wages. It makes it harder to attract the talent. It makes it harder to retain those workers who are already the backbone of any workshop. So I think it is time for change and it's time for the repairers to think about improving profitability and it's time we do start charging more for the work we do. And just some points on price comparison websites. The report also revealed 24% of the surveys responded, or respondents were worried about the impact comparison websites could have on their business. Well, whether we love them or hate them, and whether we agree or disagree, these platforms are here and they are here to stay. So I guess what we've got an opportunity to, to do here is rather than focus on the potential negative, is we need to learn from these platforms and see if we can translate some of what they do well into our own businesses. Price comparison websites don't have a physical presence, so they can't rely on that drive-by traffic that keeps you busy. But what they do understand is that 75% of all transactions commence with an online search. So for customers to find a workshop, the price comparison websites utilize things like search engine optimization and search engine marketing. 
And these days, when you think about it in our own lives, just about everything can be booked online, whether it be a haircut, a physio appointment, or even going to the gym. Now, five years ago, booking for one of these probably would have been a novelty, but now it's just become an expectation. And price comparison websites understand this and they provide a seamless process to enable customers to book their car in for a service. So again, using tools that are available to you like workshop management systems in your business can provide you with a tool that can offer your customers this. And, as, and I'll discuss things like search engine optimization and search engine marketing uh, a little bit more in, in a following slide. Thinking about margin pressures, there are some easy wins and you'll see them listed on this slide here. You know, you can optimize the services that you provide so you don't over-service your customer. You know, think about insurance companies and, and internet providers. They do this and they do it well. They give their customers a choice on a tiered level of service. Start changing the conversations we're having with our customers. As I said earlier, start talking about the years of experience, the years of knowledge, know your value, and, and begin to and have confidence to charge more because you know you're worth it. The reality is nobody went into business just so they could break even. Charge for those costs that you will incur like diagnostic and data subscriptions. It's time to stop giving away diagnostics for free. This is a service we can and should be charging our customers for. And use software to help est uh, estimate service times accurately. Think about how much efficiency productivity and revenue is lost by trying to guess how long a job will actually take to complete. Become strategic about how you mark up parts. And this is important because most likely it's the second largest part of your revenue stream. What we learned out of the survey is on average, businesses tend to apply 31% markup to their parts. However, the approach taken isn't always consistent from one job to the next or from workshop to workshop. And on the point of markup, it's really important to understand the difference between markup and margin. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna give you a little 101 uh, in markup and margin here, but um, and a number of you may already know this, uh, and I hope you do, but the, way, the best way I can explain the difference between knowing markup and margin is if you purchased a part for $90 that would have normally cost you 100 and you apply the same markup, for example, 31%, because that's what we learned was the average in the, in the survey, then your selling price has shifted from $131 to $117.90. So instead of making $31 for yourself, you now have only made $27.90. In other words, you have just given away some gross dollar margin. So if you wanted to retain that full $31 margin, you would have needed to adjust your markup from 31 to just over 34%. So just be conscious of that. There's some really good online ready reckoners that can help you understand uh, the difference between markup and margin and what a markup uh, would look like in a gross profit margin uh, environment. So um, you can easily find them on the net. There were also some other uh, important industry issues that were alluded to in the report. And these included things like access to technical information, which we've just heard about, customer supplied parts and extended dealership warranties. 25% of those that were surveyed felt access to technical information and diagnostics was a big challenge to running their automotive business. And again, no surprises about that. We've known about that for a number of years. And again, we've just heard from the minister on this topic and how the government's now working to address the situation and support the little guy. Scarily, more than 75% of, of those surveyed looked online when it comes to finding or access and trying, trying sorry, looking online when they come across something new, so that, and that alone can present its own set of challenges. Searching Google isn't always and shouldn't be your first option. And to compete against longer dealership warranties, we have to play to our strengths. As we just spoke about, your customers want to deal with you directly, and they like dealing with you because you're the person fixing their car. So let them know that you can service and maintain a car without voiding its warranty. Again, it's, it's speaking to the things you already know. In order to reduce the impact of customer supply parts uh, that has on your profitability, workshops need to consider increasing their hourly labour rates. So for those types of jobs, if you uh, do choose to uh, uh, perform those uh, and be aware of the associated risks 
that, that come with accepting uh, your customers bringing in their own parts. For many workshops, their customers are the reason they do what they do. Making their customers happy, as we've already spoken about, is one of the things they enjoy the most about working in, in the automotive industry. And perhaps that's no surprise when you consider repeat customers make up three quarters of a member's workshop's annual, uh, annual turnover. So no doubt customer referrals and repeat business is important. However, we should also be proactive in growing our business and finding new customers. We get referrals from great service that we provide through word of mouth. So why not ask your customers to give you a Google, re a Google review as a way to grow your online presence? Independent online reviews carry a lot of weight for new customers. It's estimated around 80% of new customers will read and review before completing a transaction, before making that decision. And as we just discussed, price comparison websites, they actually understand the importance of online reviews. They work extremely hard to collect those reviews from, from their customers and that makes sure that they can be read by other prospective customers searching online. So as independent workshops, we should follow that lead. Firstly, you'll need to set up a process to proactively ask your customers for those online reviews. And then secondly, you should embed the review in a prominent position on your website. So those reviews can be found easily by, by prospective customers who are searching you. And keeping regularly in contact with the car owner is also important. And it's another great marketing tactic. Many workshops routinely send service reminders, but unfortunately, many think that one service reminder is enough. Price comparison websites know that sending just one service reminder won't cut it. Their process communicates with the customer regularly once they're on their listed database. So legitimate opportunities are out there for, for, for workshops to use to communicate with your customer. And this could include things like service reminders, a 24 hour booking reminder, so reminding them again, registration reminders, which is a complimentary service or other special or other seasonal messages. They're all good marketing tactics and they're not difficult and they're not co uh, costly to implement. So as in getting towards the end of the presentation, I just want to cover off things that we have covered. As I said, there was a lot of insights and information um, that was in the report and all of which we felt was necessary to share with you. As I said earlier, it's available to anybody on our public website. But to wrap up, we do have some final recommendations to share and some, and some, some of these could be quick wins while others might take more, more time and more, uh, more effort to action. But we want all workshops to have a strong and sustainable business because that means that we have a, st a strong and sustainable automotive aftermarket industry, both now and for years to come. So to recap, here are some of those that we've already spoken about today. First of all, don't be afraid to charge for more. Lowering margins are a concern, but there are some easy wins for the bottom line. Charge for, the, for those diagnostics and increase your hourly labour rates to estimate your service times accurately. Let's work together on the pay rate issue, attracting the next generation of, of technicians and keeping our best long-term staff is going to require making the industry more lucrative for people to want to either come and begin, to begin a life in it or continue to work in it. Cover yourself when it comes to customer supplied parts. If you're willing to fit them, then charge extra for labor or ask, and or ask your customer to agree that if the part is faulty, that they'll pay for your labor to remove and replace it. Get them to, to, to sign a disclaimer so you aren't the one left liable. Invest in, in scan tools and other technology. Don't fall behind your comp uh, competitors or risk turning away business because you don't have the tools you need. Invest in those scan tools and recoup those costs by charging your customers for those diagnostic tests. And finally, consider changing or enhancing your marketing strategy. Don't just rely on that word of mouth and, or, and referrals to bring in those new customers do some target marketing. It's not expensive. Ask your customers for those Google reviews. They are particularly useful. And more importantly, make sure you keep in regular contact with your customer. And again, uh, it's not costly. It's a simple thing to do. So I'm gonna wrap up there. Um, my final words is Capricorn, like the Aftermarket Association, is built on the principles that by standing together, we can all achieve more than we can alone. So collectively with our members and our preferred suppliers, we are going to, we're going to continue to do our best to ensure our industry remains strong and vibrant. 
So Stuart, once again, thank you for the opportunity to share a few words today. Uh, and to everybody on uh, today's webinar, please enjoy the rest of uh, today's Industry Leaders Forum. Thank you very much. David, our industry, as we know, is built on, um, on, on resilience and on um, adaptation. And uh, you've certainly um, uh, demonstrated that this morning. David presented from um, Western Australia, Perth this morning. Um, so he was on uh, the, the line at uh, 5.30 a.m. And um, yeah, thank you so much, David. Uh, a, a couple of things out of that presentation and, and thank you so much for the presentation and also for the survey. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's really important data uh, that we've got there on on just what is um, uh, on the mind of, of, of workshop owners and, and and some of the challenges that uh, all workshops collectively uh, are facing moving forward. And um, um, I just wanted to say that the, the AAA and I know Capricorn are, are up for um, really tackling some of those bigger uh, industry challenges. Um, we need to do everything we can uh, to maintain the, the, the fabric of, of, of what our industry is all about, which is uh, that small business, that those local businesses um, uh, delivering great value, having that relationship with their uh, customers. And, and I believe if, you know, if we work uh, uh, collectively um, on those bigger issues and, 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 and support each other, um, that uh, we can uh, work through those issues and have a very prosperous um, industry moving forward. So um, David, thank you for your presentation. Um, thank you for all that you do for the industry, both in your role at, at Capricorn, but also all the work that uh, and, and support that you've given and continue to give uh, to the AAA over, over so many years.